Is that all the mail? Yeah. This one's got a real pretty smell. Smell? Oh, boy, I'd like to meet her. <laughs> Whoever uses this stuff. Well, I'm off to the grind. See you fellas tonight. Letter for you. Well, mailman been here already? Yep. Smell it, yeah. Hmm? Smell it. Yeah, smell. Oh, it sure does. Perfume, huh? <laughs> yeah. It smells like the junk those ladies use when they bend over and kiss you. Tell you how cute you are. <laughs> that ought to be my complaint. <laughs> hmm. Hmm, what? Hmm. Hmm. Uh, listen in. Dear Stevie. Stevie? Yeah. Dear Stevie, it's been so long since we were together. Happily, I will be driving through Bryant Park, and I simply must stop off to see you and your three darling boys. <laughs> Stevie, we once meant so much to each other, and I cherish the memory of those wonderful days. I recall with special fondness the last time we met when you said, I'll remember you forever. I am as ever Florence. I don't remember you ever talking about anybody named Florence. I don't either, Charlie. Boy, that sure is a mushy letter. Who is she, Dad? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? You said you'd always remember her. Well, I evidently didn't, Charlie, because I have no idea who Florence is. Well, I'll be home right after school. Okay, Robbie. Hey, uh, you having a family conference? No, your dad got a letter from an old flame he can't remember who's coming to visit. Oh, now, Charlie, it doesn't necessarily have to be an old flame. Maybe it's uh, well, one of my old school teachers or someone like that. Who did I ever know named Florence? Dad, is there a return address? No, no return address. According to the postmark, it was mailed from Seattle, so that's no help. Well, uh, is it too personal, or could I take a look? <laughs> if I don't remember who she is, I don't see how it could be too personal. <laughs> Maybe she's French. Why French? Smells like French perfume. <laughs> Dad, how could you forget somebody you said you'd remember forever? It ain't easy. Rob, I don't remember ever having said that to anyone. Don't worry. You'll know her the minute you see her. Oh, sure. Florence. Mm -hmm. Boy, get me. I'll see you later. Okay, bye, Dad. She's here, Dad. Who's here? Florence. Don't you remember, Dad? The lady you don't remember? Uh, yeah. Oregon license plate. That's a clue. Remember Oregon Florence? <laughs> I'll say, Dad, right next to the Washington. I, I know. I'll try to remember if I know any Florence from Oregon. Ah, oh, relax. You'll recognize her the minute you see her. Uh, hold it. I'll get it. Hiya. Hello. Is this the Douglas residence? Yeah. Florence? Yes. Yeah. It's uh, certainly nice to see you again. Uh, you, you haven't changed a bit. It's been a long time. I, I have changed. No, no, you look just the same as you always look. Oh, how nice of you to think so. The same kind, sweet Stevie. <laughs> and these are your three darling boys. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, this is Robbie, and this is Chip, and Ernie, and uh, this Hi. is their Uncle Charlie. Hi. Uh, uh, fellas, this is uh, Florence. Uh, I, I mean, uh, Miss... Uh, Miss? I haven't been Miss since shortly after you left town. It's Mrs. Glendenning. Oh, fellas, this is Mrs. Glenn Denning. How do you do? Hi. Well, I guess we have uh, some reminiscing to do. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, come in and sit down, won't you? <laughs> uh, why don't you sit right here, Florence? Huh? Well. Oh, it's so nice to see you again, Stevie. Boys, I suppose you know your father better than I do, but I knew him first. Those were wonderful days. Happy days. You know, I've never met another man who was so strong, yet so gentle, so kind, so careful never to hurt a girl's feelings. Well, it, uh, those certainly were wonderful days. Oh, what a charming home. Oh, it's, uh, it's comfortable. To think all of this might have been mine. Yours? Mm -hmm. 
I wonder what my life would have been like if I hadn't married Marty. Uh, Marty? Mr. Glendening. Oh, yeah, yes, yes. Uh, how is uh, Marty? He died about a year ago. <laughs> I must say I've been lonely ever since, especially since we had no children. But life must go on, mustn't it? That's why I decided to make this trip. Oh. you like a cup of coffee? Oh, no thanks. I can only stay a moment. I couldn't wait to see you, Stevie. So I stopped by on my way to the Bryant Park Inn. I have a reservation there. Oh, well, from your letter, I gathered that you were just driving through Bryant Park. I mean, uh, are you planning on staying? What? Yes. We have so much to talk about. Won't it be wonderful? Oh, yes, yes, certainly. Well, um... Oh, I thought tonight maybe that we could... Have dinner together, uh, just as though we'd never party. If you're free. Yes, I'd like to have dinner with you, Florence. Uh, I mean, I'd, I'd sort of planned on it. it. It sounds so strange to hear you call me Florence. It does. But don't you remember what you used to call me, your pet name? Oh, the, the, the pet name. <laughs> now, let's see, I used to call you... Uh... <laughs> it's funny, it's right on the tip of my tongue. You've forgotten. <laughs> I'm afraid... Uh... Honey bun. <laughs> honey bun? Dad called you a honey bun? I sent chills up my spine. Well, <laughs> well I, I better go now. Check in, freshen up, uh, see tonight? Yes, yes, I'll, uh, I'll pick you up at the end around uh, 8 o'clock, if that's all right. That'll be fine. Goodbye, Stevie. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye what? Oh, <laughs> goodbye, honey bun. <laughs> I just don't remember her. But, Dad, you called her honey bun. Well, a lot of fellas called girls honey bun in those days. Why didn't you just blurt out that she had slipped your mind? Well, Charlie, I couldn't do that. I, I, I didn't want to embarrass her. Besides, I kept thinking maybe it had all come back to me. Think of a girl you were with when it was cold and snowy. Cold and snowy. Cold and snowy? Yeah. She said chills ran up her spine. <laughs> <laughs> maybe she's a girl I dated in college. Uh, she thinks it's something more than just casual, Dad. She was talking about marriage. Marriage? How, how, how would I ever forget a thing like that? <laughs> well, maybe it'll come back to me tonight when I'm having dinner with her. I hope. Come in, Dan. Oh, thank you. Sir? Thanks. Would you care to order now, sir? Well, I uh, guess so. I bet you don't remember what my favorite dish was. You know, it's funny. I was, I was just wondering if you remembered mine. <laughs> Mr. Douglas will have steak, medium rare, baked potato with sour cream and chives, and French dressing with his salad, and coffee black. I'll have the uh, lobster with the salad. Thank you, sir. Oh. Well, you were certainly remembered. <laughs> the only thing is, I've switched from French to Thousand Island, but of course I couldn't expect you to know that. Who would believe it? Uh, that I switched to Thousand Island? <laughs> but here we are together again after all these years. Strange, isn't it? Yes, yes, it's, uh, it's strange. Stevie. Uh, Florence, uh, why don't you just call me Steve, huh? I mean, Stevie sounds a little juvenile now, doesn't it? That's true. We are older. Steve, tell me the truth. About what? Were you terribly hurt when you heard I was going to marry Marty? Well, yes, yes, a, a little. Mm, I understand. Your pride. I wonder what my life would have been like if I'd married you instead of Marty. Well, that's uh, water over the dam, isn't it? You remembered. I did? Uh, why? Of course so. 
it. You requested it. <laughs> the song we used to dance to at the Red Top Inn. The Red Top Inn. That was that little inn just out of town, right near the Midwest campus. Yes. Did you used to go there, too? Oh. Stop teasing me. You took me there. <laughs> That's right, I will. Shall we uh, dance? Well, yes, yes, I will. For old Lang Syne. <laughs> Sing it softly in my ear. You had a lovely voice. Thank you. Boys might be interested in this. Recognize him? Hey, that's Dad. He must have been about my age. Hey, Dad, you look just like one of us guys there. I'll be darned. Uh, where did you get that picture? I took it. You did? Mm -hmm. Guess who this is? Yes. Your father took it. You know, it's a funny thing, but I don't remember having taken that. Oh, yes, you, you snapped it right after I took this one with you. Oh, that, that, that's right. <laughs> You're kind of different there. Oh, these bring back memories, don't they? Yes, they certainly do. <gasps> that's why I've kept them. And this? Probably died, an old Midwest pennant, the old green and white. Uh, where did you get that? He bought it for me the same day. <laughs> I kept it all this time. Well, I can see why you'd want to hang on to it. It's a nice memento. I'm very fond of it, but would you like it, Steve? Oh, no, no, you keep it there. I have my memories here. Thank you. <laughs> okay, shoot, on. Come and get it. Well, I hate to leave all this, but I guess dinner's ready. <laughs> Charlie? Hi. Well? You mean to say you don't remember her, even after those pictures and all that college junk? No. Nope. Do you suppose my mind is going? <laughs> you probably have a mental block about her, Dad. You know, at first I thought maybe she had me confused with somebody else, some other fellow, but uh, now I know she hasn't. Dad, I can't see how you could forget a girl you considered marrying. Now, that's one thing I know for sure. I never considered marrying. Well, Dad, then why can't you just tell her you don't remember her? Well, I didn't have a heart at first. Now it's too late. I didn't think she was going to stay in town this long. You should take memory pills. Dad, you need something to stimulate your memory. I got it. Word association. What's that? We studied it in psych. Psych. <laughs> now, when I say a word, you say the first thing that comes to your mind. For instance, uh, if I said college, what would you say? Fast, Dad. Uh, studies. There, you see? Now, if I said studies, you'd probably say uh, poli-sci or American Lit or something like that. Then you remember all the classes you took. Well, I'm willing to try anything. Okay. Girls. Dates. Dates. Girls. <laughs> no, you have to say something specific, like, well, the girls you dated. Oh. Golly, let's see. Uh, there was uh, Evelyn, Norma, Marilyn, Virginia, Susan. Uh, you would like Susan, she was a uh, peppy. Get the phones, will you? I am not all day. Well, yeah, I think Robbie's right. I just got a metal block when it comes to Florence. Uh, you have another date with her tonight? Oh, well, naturally. I didn't know how to get out of it. <laughs> it's nice of you boys to invite me here. I was hoping for a chance to get to know you better. Well, we thought you might be able to tell us a couple of things about that. I'm one you used to date him. Why? Well, we're doing a biography on Dad for our class. Both of you? No, Ernie is. I'm helping. <laughs> well, why don't you ask your father? He doesn't like to talk about himself. Well, that's true. He was shy even then. Put that down, Chip. <laughs> Dad was shy. Is there anything special he did? Oh, lots of things. I remember he used to play the saxophone. And his favorite song was Paddling Madeline Home. Paddling? Who? <laughs> Madeline. Oh, how do you spell Madeline? Well, just put it down, Chip. Well, 
fill in the spelling later. <laughs> I'll write it for you. Thanks. Anything else? No. He had a, a great love for poetry. He used to recite it to me. Recited poetry. Now, boys, there are a few things I want to ask you. Okay? Okay. You said you played a saxophone and sang a song called Paddling... Paddling somebody someplace. Oh, uh, Paddling Madeline Home? Yeah, that's it. Wow, well, I remember. We did it, Chip. You remember her? No, no, I mean I remember the song. <laughs> All right, kids, what else? Well, not much, because then she started asking us questions. That's strange. Strange? I'll tell you what she's getting at. My job. <laughs> I'll get it. Hello? Oh, hi. Uh, yes, he's here. Hang on a second. Dad, it's for you. It's Mrs. Glendening. Uh, hello, Florence. You've reached a decision? What decision, Florence? Well, yes, I suppose I could meet you there. It's urgent. Well, I could be there in about 15 minutes. Fine, I'll, uh, I'll see you. Well, she's reached a decision. What decision? Who knows? I'm meeting her at the hotel coffee shop. Maybe she's decided to tell you who she is. Well, don't hold in it for me, Charlie. This may be the showdown. Good luck, Dad. Thanks, Ann. Oh, what a tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive. <laughs> That's uh, poetry. <laughs> Uh, would you care for a uh, chili or cream? Oh, no, thanks. No. Well, Florence, this uh, decision you've made, it sounds pretty important. Well, it affects your future and mine. Well, that is important. I told you I was here on business. You are that business. I am? Yes. Remember Howard Dillon? Howard Dillon? <laughs> yes. He was... In your American hit class? He still speaks of you. Oh, that Howard. <laughs> oh, he, he was in my American hit class. He wants to marry me. That's why I came here. You came here to marry him? No, I came here to decide whether to marry him or you. Oh. <laughs> as soon as I saw you, I... I knew that things were the same between us. You still felt the same way about me. You remembered every little thing. Well, I think now is the time for me to tell you that I really... Please, let, let me finish. This isn't going to be easy. I decided to marry Howard. I mean, you have? His wife died about a year ago, and ever since he's had his hands full with their two little girls, you've done a beautiful job raising your boys. Oh, well, thank you. Everything seems to be running smoothly. Uh, the boys told me how Charlie supplies the woman's touch. Oh, well, well, you know what I mean. Anyway, Howard needs me. You don't. When you put it that way... It was the only decision I could make under the circumstances. Try to understand that. Well, I... I understand perfectly. <laughs> Harold needs you. Oh, God. Florence, it was uh, nice of you to stop by to say goodbye to the family. Well, why not? They could have been mine. <laughs> Be sure and uh, give Harold my regards, won't you? Howard. Uh, <laughs> I know you two are going to be very happy. Thank you. Now, Steve, remember, you're going to try to forget me. Yes, I'm going to try. <laughs> uh, goodbye.
Has she gone there? Yes, she's on her way. Off to the arms of Harold. Howard. <laughs> oh, Dan, there was a phone call for you just before Miss Clendenning came this morning. Well, I'm glad you finally told me, Erin. Uh, who was it? I don't know. Chip took the message. Who called Chip? Oh, he said his name was Mr. Uh... Oh, I forgot. You forgot? Well, Chip, that could have been a very important phone call. I mean, well, you're 14 years old now. How can you forget a simple thing like a name? find a college where a chip can major in uh, electric guitar and folk singing. I have the same problem with Preston. He'd like to get a PhD in surfing. <laughs> well, I'm sorry to interrupt, Steve or Ray, but something's come up. Oh, uh, we discovered our mistake here. Uh, 3 times 12 is 36. And you can't get any closer than that. <laughs> That's not what came up. The uh, father-son dinner of our boys' junior high class has hit a snag. What's the matter? Don't the kids want to eat with us? <laughs> of course they do. As chairman of the entertainment committee, I've had to revise our after-dinner activities. I thought you'd lined up an astronaut to give a talk. Yeah, well, NASA threw me a curve. They called him back to prepare for a new test in space. Oh, well, of course, you can always get the mayor. <laughs> <laughs> now, look, I think I've got a great idea. You know those quiz contests they have on TV between college students? Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to do the same thing. A father and son quiz show. What fathers and what sons, Dave? Well, the three of us against our three sons, Chip and Preston and uh, Dave Jr. Well, Dave, that wouldn't be much of a contest, would it? I mean, after all, they're just kids and we're all college graduates. Uh, Dave, we don't want to make them look foolish. Now, look, did they take pity on us at last year's picnic ball game? No. Uh, I remember your son struck you out four times. Three. <laughs> Come to think of it, my boy laughed at me when I got a charley horse. <laughs> well, it might be funny with Preston, but... Uh, well, let's take it kind of easy on him. <laughs> yes. But it's a fair. I mean, isn't it kind of one-sided? They're grown men. Well, I'm not worried. Now, you boys may only be in junior high school, but you're all excellent students. Well, I'm talking about our fathers. They've been out of school so long, they probably forgot everything they ever knew. They won't have a chance. <laughs> we'll clobber them, just like we did in the ball game. <laughs> boys, boys, let's not be egotistical. We're not being egotistical, Mrs. Terry. We're being humane. Yeah. Well, after I struck my father out three times, his ulcer acted up for a month. <laughs> Mrs. Terry, to quote an ancient Chinese proverb, dutiful son should always respect honorable father. Now, now look, boys, I've already accepted the challenge. And um, to quote an expression that I've heard around here, you can't chicken out. Well, I guess we can well, we have to go, Miss Terry. It promises to be a very exciting evening. Hey, Preston, I kind of like that ancient Chinese proverb. Who said it? Confucius? No, Lenny Rubin. He writes up fortune cookies for my uncle's restaurant. <laughs> Uncle Charlie, don't you think Dad's going to win? Right now, he's deader than these ducks. Oh, hi, guys. Hi. Hiya. Mmm, something smells good. What's for dinner, Charlie? Ducks. Mmm. Mm, Uncle Charlie thinks you're deader than they are. Oh, he does, doesn't he? You certainly are. Tiny with Chip and his pals in that quiz. <laughs> I tried to talk Mrs. Terry out of it, Dad, but no go. Well, Chip, I'm sure you don't have to worry about us. <laughs> I'm with you all the way, Dad. You'll skunk him. Thanks, Emmy. Well, I'll uh, get washed up for dinner. Oh, Steve. What happened to that astronaut that was going to speak at the dinner? Well, you had to go back and take a new test or something. Hmm. Well, why don't you guys join him? You'll be safer in outer space. <laughs> well, Ray, I think we've just about got it licked. Just about. And this one hasn't been easy, Steve. 
Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right, Dave. Well, how about knocking off for the day, fellas? Well, we're just about finished with this project. Now, look, we got a more important project, that quiz contest tonight. Oh, Dave, you worry too much. Well, I'm worried because I know my kid. He picks at me like Koufax. He's liable to answer questions like Einstein. Questions will be simple. They have to be, otherwise it wouldn't be fair to the kids. It'll be about uh, general information. You know, that's why I brought these books. Let's see, now, there's the almanac and the famous dates and the encyclopedia of history. <laughs> Dave, we're not stupid, you know. Mrs. Sturry is going to ask questions junior high kids can answer, like, when was the Battle of Waterloo? Sure. Now, let's see, the Battle of Waterloo was fought in the year uh, 1815. Right. June the 18th. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, let's just check on it, huh? All right. Let's see, Battle of Waterloo. Hey, you know, you're right. <laughs> you see, it's amazing how it all comes back to you. I guess it's kind of like uh, riding a bicycle. <laughs> or pulling a rickshaw. <laughs> I think it's time for our contest to start. Now, I'm sure you all know our contestants. The father contestants are Mr. Douglas, Mr. Welch, and Mr. Wong. And the sons are Chip Douglas, Dave Welch, Jr., and Preston Wong. All right, now the rules of the contest are very simple. Ten points for each correct answer. Ten points deducted for each incorrect answer. And the first team to score 50 points wins. Uh, does that sound uh, mathematically sound, Mr. Wong? Well, offhand I say yes, but I wish I had my slide rule. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now, is it clearly understood by all that each question must be answered within ten seconds? And uh, if the first team fails to answer, then the question goes to the other team. Well, ten seconds will be fine. Okay by me. Dad, if you want 30 seconds, it's okay. Ten is plenty. Just remember, son, he who laughs last brings home the bacon. <laughs> hey, that's a good one for your uncle's fortune cookie. Yeah, I'll tell Lenny. All right. Now, we'll start with the first question to the father. What was the starting point of the Lewis and Clark expedition to the Northwest? Well, I know they, uh, they ended up at the Columbia River. Oh, I, I asked where they started from, Mr. Douglas. <laughs> it's someplace in the Midwest. I got it, Kansas City. Wrong, Dad. St. Louis. <laughs> Correct. Ten points for the sun. <laughs> All right, boys. Who saved Captain John Smith's flight? I don't know. It's turn. Pocahontas. Correct. That gives 20 points to the sun. <laughs> All right. Father, who was Pocahontas' husband? <laughs> I didn't even know the chick was married. <laughs> name like uh, Rogers or Rollins. Jim. Yeah, the, the, the first name was James or George. Uh, mm, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, time's up. Boys. Oh, Rolf. John Rolf. John Q. Rolf. <laughs> she didn't ask his middle name. <laughs> And so the boys now have 30 points. All right. Uh, boys, this question is rather difficult. Uh, how long did the Ming Dynasty last? <laughs> how did that, Mrs. Terry? The Ming Dynasty lasted from the 10th to the 12th century. It's wrong, and it's uh, not your turn anyway. <laughs> 17th century? That's correct. 40 points for the start. <laughs> All right, fathers. Here's a question for you about the Battle of Waterloo. <laughs> well, we're ready for that one. Let's have it. All right. Where was it fought? 1850. June the 18th. Ten points for our <laughs> When I wait, I didn't say when. I said where. Oh, where? Oh, Europe. <laughs> well, uh, where in Europe? Oh, uh, uh, Waterloo. Hmm? What country, Mr. Douglas? Oh, what country? Uh, well, it was the uh, Lowlands. Uh, Holland. Mm. 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 Sorry. Boy. You were close, Dad. It was Belgium. 
Questions were simple. That's what makes it so embarrassing. Unsuspecting foot can sometimes stub big toe on small pebble. Thank you, Confucius. <laughs> I know you'd get clobbered, but minus 90. Wow! It wasn't minus 90. It was minus 40. 90 was the point spread, Uncle Charles. Yeah, don't feel too bad. It's not whether you win or lose. It's how you play the game. <laughs> you guys must have played like a bunch of clucks. Oh, Dad was great. We were just lucky. No, 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 no. Enjoy your victory. We uh, tried our best, but it just wasn't good enough. Well, aren't you supposed to be a good sport when you knock off an opponent? Yeah. And you really knocked us off. I'll say one thing, Dad. You might have goofed tonight, but those kids can't build planes the way you do. Thank you. Don't be too sure. Maybe they ought to get a crack at it. Hi. Oh, hi, Lamb. Hey, Dad, uh, I met Mrs. Terry. I heard the fathers blew it. Tough luck. Yeah, but they were in there trying. <laughs> we were in there trying. Steve, I wish you'd stop saying that. <laughs> no, what bugs me is how Steve could miss out on where is Waterloo. Well, it bugs me too, Ray. I don't know why I said Holland. I've been to Brussels, and that's only 33 miles away. I guess Holland was where Napoleon wished he was. <laughs> no, Ray, don't laugh at Steve. After all, you missed the Ming Dynasty question, and you're not a Norwegian. <laughs> The whole thing's over, so why don't we settle down and try to forget the whole miserable episode? Yeah, you're right. It's water under the bridge. At least we were in there trying. May we come in? Oh, yes. Come in, Mrs. Terry. I hope we're not disturbing you, Dennis. Oh, no, no. Not at all. I'd uh, like you to meet Mr. Reynolds of our local TV station. This is Mr. Douglas, Mr. Hello. Wells, How do you do? and Mr. Wong. Gentlemen, it's a pleasure. Now, this shouldn't take more than a minute. It so happens that a member of my staff was at your father and son dinner. Now, he reports to me that your quiz contest was delightful as well as educational. Oh, it was uh, educational, all right. Uh, we learned how much we didn't know. <laughs> well, Mr. Reynolds has a wonderful idea. He'd like the two teams to meet again on television next Friday night. Television? <laughs> you mean uh, you want us to appear on television? Yeah. We'll give it a terrific publicity buildup. The whole city will be watching it. Well, it's a shame you picked Friday. I have to be in New York on Friday. I'll be in San Francisco. I'm sorry, but I'm, uh, I'm tied up, too. Too bad. Uh, Mr. Reynolds was going to pay us $500 for the school library fund. Well, it's uh, too bad we're tied up. Yes. $500, huh? Uh, Mr. Reynolds, uh, would it be possible to clear time for the quiz show on, say, uh, Thursday night? It certainly would. <laughs> well, that's fine, because uh, we're not busy on Thursday night, are we, fellas? <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, uh, a Thursday will be fine, Mr. Rand. <laughs> fine. I thank you very much, gentlemen. And you have the highest rating in Bryant Park history. And thank you on behalf of the library fund. <laughs> well, uh, you uh, will let us know the time. Yes, all these steps. Well, Steve, have you blown your top... What are you doing to us? It was bad enough losing in front of a few fathers. Now, you fixed it so all of Bryant Park will be laughing at us. Now, wait. Have you stopped to figure out why we lost? We lost because we were overconfident and we goofed it. Now, the boys took the whole thing very seriously, and they studied. Now, just a minute. Remember me? I'm the guy that suggested studying in the first place. Oh, that's right, you did, Dave. Well, I think if we study this time, we've got a good chance of winning. Uh, right, Ray? Right. Then we'll study. I've still got those research books. I'm going to call my grandfather. He's a winding on anything mean. <laughs> Remember, we have the age, the experience, and the education. And, uh, the most to lose. <laughs> Nineteen fifty-nine, nineteen twelve, eighteen eighty-nine, eighteen fifty. On the button. Three longest rivers. Nile, 4,145 miles. Amazon, 3,900. Mississippi, 3,711. One mile off on Mississippi, but we'll notice. 
Name three Greek philosophers. Aristotle, Socrates, and Plato. Very good on Greek philosophy, Dave. Majored in it. Well, you know, this three nights of boning up's done us a lot of good. Uh, we just might give the boys a surprise. Hey, Ray, we better get into that ancient Chinese category. Oh, yes. Got my grandfather's book right here. Good. Ask me some questions. <clears throat> oh, that's going to be tough. What's the matter? This thing is written in Chinese. Oh. Well, let's move on to geography. Uh, Steve? Name the highest mountain peaks in North America, Europe, and Asia. Mount McKinley, Mount Blank, and Mount Everest. Great geography. I'm pushed. Look, what do we racking our brains out for? We're supposed to take them again. Yeah, let's quit. Good night, Chip. See you, Chip. Hey, wait a minute. Aw, oh, Chip, we don't have to study anymore. We'll beat them worse than last time. That's what I was just thinking. What do you mean? You know, well, maybe we shouldn't. Shouldn't what? Try too hard. Well, this is going to be a big TV program with millions of people tuned in. Bryant Park? <laughs> okay, thousands. <laughs> well, I mean, well, supposing we were fathers. Our kids made monkeys out of us. We'd feel pretty embarrassed. As fathers, I mean. Yeah, we would. You're right. Our dads are going to come in for a lot of ribbing. Not if they win, they won't. Are you saying we should let them? Well, why not? They're pretty good guys. The best. I hate to say it, but I got to go along with you. Then it's settled. We take a dive. <laughs> and the questions will be general information. Ten points will be scored for each correct answer. Ten points deducted for mistakes. The team having a higher score at the end of the 30 minutes will be declared winner. Our moderator this evening, the vice principal of Bryan Park Junior High School, Mrs. Joan Terry. You know, maybe we should have donated that $500. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with the cover sheet? They look awful pale. <laughs> Set swine. They just got that white look because they're walking the last mile. <laughs> right? The first question is for the students on the subject of American history. Name the dates when the following states were admitted to the Union. New York, Vermont, and Alaska. Uh, New York, 1788. Vermont, 1791. Alaska, 1949. Oh, sorry, uh... Father, do you uh, know that answer? 59, 59. Well, uh, Alaska was admitted in 1959. Well, that's correct. Uh, ten points for the father. <laughs> and minus ten for the son. Uh, good work, you. Now, a question for the father. Name the opposing generals at the Battle of Waterloo. <laughs> Napoleon for the French. Luca for the Prussians and Wellington for the British. That's ten more points for the father. Uh, now a question for the boys on the subject of marine life. Is a whale a fish or a mammal? A whale is a fish. Sorry, uh, father. <laughs> whale is a mammal. That's correct. Chip, I'm surprised at you. I guess I forgot. That's minus 10 for the sun. <laughs> What's the score now? Our side's winning. It's a runaway for the dad. The contest will resume after a short film about our new library. Shoes on the other foot tonight, eh, fellas? <laughs> Never thought he'd been such a cinch. <laughs> I'm a little surprised myself. <laughs> oh, gentlemen, gentlemen, while we're off the air, I want to tell you how well it's going. This is going to be the talk of Bryant Park. Well, uh, Mr. Reynolds, how much longer does this library film run? Just two more minutes. Is it all right if I talk to our opponents? Oh, yes, of course. I can't thank you enough. This is really going to be a fix match. It's gone, fellas. Now, I haven't seen my dad so happy since I got rid of my beetle haircut. <laughs> Here comes your dad. One of those questions is sure tough tonight. Hey, you're doing great tonight, Mr. Douglas. Yeah, we are, aren't we? I, uh, I think I know why. Because your fathers are smarter than us kids. That's why. You bet. Absolutely. No, that isn't why. It isn't? Oh, you fellas know it isn't. Chip. You don't do anybody a favor by trying to give them something they don't deserve. 
We're not winning this game. You're handing it to us on a silver platter. Well, I don't know why you're saying that. A whale is a fish. I know you know better than that. You fellas are a lot smarter than you're showing, and we fathers aren't quite as dumb as you think we are, so in this last round, you play on the up and up. You try to win. Win? Us? How can we? Your fathers are so far ahead. Well, believe me, we can use the advantage. The first Chief Justice of the Supreme Court was John Jay. He served from 1789 to 1795. That's correct. And the score is now tied. Father's 90, son's 90. Take it easy, Dave. This is where experience and cool head counts. Not if she rings in a main. <laughs> well, let's see. We just have time for one more question. Uh, for the fathers. On the subject of aviation. Hey, we're in. We're in. <laughs> Who made the first flight over the Antarctic continent? Was it uh, Bert? Was it Bert? Or was it Wilkins? Ray? Don't look at me. I know it wasn't Sun Yat Sen. You've got to make a choice. What do you think, Bird or Bird? Bird. Uh, Admiral Richard E. Bird. Oh, I'm sorry. A boy. Tough luck, Dan. It was Sir Hubert Wilkins. That's correct. And the Suns win the game 100 to 90. At least it was closer this time. <laughs> Oh, it was a simply marvelous show, and so suspenseful, especially the way the boys came back and won. Yeah, how about that? Well, uh, we were in there trying. Uh, sorry, Dave. <laughs> what a program, what a program. The phones haven't stopped ringing. It's the best thing ever seen on local TV. Oh, no, I got a great idea. You know what we're going to do? We're going to televise the annual Fathers and Sons baseball game this year. How does that strike you? <laughs> Uh, well, uh, I'll be in Vladivostok. Vostok. Uh, I'll be in Hong Kong. I'll be with them. In both places? Yes. <laughs> I just pulled in there. Yes, I didn't have any change. I didn't help get some. Well, this will fix it. Well, I'm afraid it won't, sir. You see, you were parked and the red indicator was up. Yes, I know. It's down now. Oh, yes, sir. It's down all right. So we can just forget about the ticket. Huh? Uh, no, sir. I'm afraid not. But, officer, I've only been parked here for a minute. Uh, two minutes at the most. I believe you, sir. Well, fine. Now that you understand, we can just forget the ticket. Huh? Uh, no, sir. <laughs> Officer, I understand you're, uh, you're just doing your duty. Yes, sir, I am. May I see your driver's license, please? Driver's license? I, I thought you just stuck those citations on the windshield. Well, only when the driver's not here. Stephen Douglas, 837 Mill Street. That's where Robbie Douglas lives. You must be Robbie's father. Well, yes, I am. Uh, do you know Robbie? Yes, we're good friends. We're in the same classes at college together. I just do this part-time. You're, uh, good friends, huh? Well, it's, uh, nice meeting you, Officer, uh... Uh, Malone, Vicky Malone. Nice to meet you, Mr. Douglas. Well, thank you. Well, Vicky, I must say I admire Robbie's taste. Where's he been hiding you? I mean, uh, why haven't I seen you around? Oh, you'll see me tonight. I'm invited to your house for dinner. You're coming to the house for dinner? That's wonderful. Your driver's license, sir. Oh, well, thank you, Vicky. And your citation. You mean you're still going to... Oh, yes, sir. Well, of course, I wouldn't want any special favors just because you happen to be a friend of Robbie's or, or uh, because you're coming to our house for dinner. Of course not. It's only $2. Uh, $2.10, Sam's not. <laughs> Mr. Douglas, you're funny. Just like Robbie. 
see you at dinner tonight. Mr. Douglas, may I see your driver's license again, please? Again? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, about what? Well, this license expired a month ago. Well, well, I'll, uh, I'll have it renewed the uh, first chance I get. Oh, you better do it immediately. Oh, yes, I will. Mr. Douglas, I'm afraid this ticket's going to cost you $5. You mean you're going to give me a... Sorry. <laughs> the phone. Who's going to answer the phone? I know. Me. <laughs> Hello? Out of club. No, Mr. Douglas isn't home yet. Can I give him a message? Parking ticket? What parking ticket? All right, I'll tell him. Hi, Ernie. Hey, wait a minute. What are you slamming the door for? What are you so about? Women. I'm through with women. Look, oh, the, little, the little girl across the street. Don't mention Ginger's name in front of me. Well, look, I thought you two were skateboard pals. She's cheap. That's what she is. C-H-E-E-P. Five pieces of bubble gum, and she wouldn't let me have one little single hung. Maybe she likes to blow great big bubbles. I don't care if I ever see another woman again. Yeah, well, you're going to see her pretty soon, because Robbie is bringing home a woman to dinner. Hmm? I'll eat my room. Yeah, well, you leave it at the table. Under the table. Yeah, well, you sit up with the rest of us, and what's more, you wear a great big smile. Okay, I'll smile, but you won't know what I'm thinking. <laughs> Here you are, madam. Aren't are the questions hard? Oh, yes, very hard, so oh. you'll be sure to answer them carefully. I will, thank you, sir. Good morning, I uh, just dropped in to renew my driver's license, and I am in sort of a hurry. Oh, yes, sir, may I see your old license? All right. Oh, sir, uh, this license has expired. Oh, yes, I know that. that. That's why I'm here. See, once you let it expire, uh, you have to pass a written test. A written test? I, I mean, uh, well, I've been driving for over 25 years. I, I'm an aeronautical engineer. And... It's the law, sir. Oh. Here you are. <laughs> True or false? And are you sure you don't want to study the manual first? As I said, I've been driving for over 25 years. Uh, engineer, I'll just check them off you in a hurry. Uh, sir, I would suggest the counter... Oh. And I wouldn't be too hasty. I uh, don't think I'll have any problems, thanks. My, you're fast. Well, I should know how to drive by now. No conversation, please. What's with you? I gotta get this bank open. Emergency. Emergency? Blow out the fuses on your electric guitar? <laughs> this is serious. I got a notice from the library today. I owe him a $3.60 fine. What'd you forget to restart? The whole encyclopedia? <laughs> well, what do you know? Just a little short. You know how your dad feels about that kind of negligence. I'm raiding my bank so he won't find out. Well, maybe I can help you out. How much do you need? Well, I've got 60 cents. All I need is three dollars. I can't help you out. <laughs> no, give me alive. You'll just have to brace yourself and face the music. Six wrong, two over the limit. Now, may I suggest that you study the manual a little before taking the test again? <laughs> well, we have a manual at home, thanks. I'll be back the first thing in the morning. We open at nine. <laughs> well, now, how did you do? Wow, very good, madam. But that's 100% correct. <laughs> now, you take this over to window four, and the clerk will take care of you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Boy, what a day. A little rough, Dad? Miserable. Excuse me, Jim. I think I'll brace myself and face the music tomorrow. So. Okay, but it'll cost you four cents more. Steve, we're eating in the dining room. 
Robbie is bringing home a college girl to dinner. I know. You having a financial difficulties, Chip? No, not me. The library. They're three dollars and sixty cents short. Would you mind repeating that a uh, little more clearly? Well, you remember the last time I took a book out and forgot to return it? You've done it again? Yeah. I'm sorry, Dad. I hate to ask you, but I need three dollars. I know how you feel about negligence. Oh. Well, there you are, Chip. Three dollars. You mean I get it just like that? No sweat, no lecture on negligence? Well, what's the father for, Chip? If you can give his son three dollars when he needs it. Thanks. Uh, Vicky tells me you two already know each other. Good evening, Mr. Douglas. Yes, uh, hello, Vicky. Oh, this is Chip, the middle one. Hi. And this is Ernie, the little one. Hi. This is Vicky, you guys. Yes, Rob, uh, Officer Malone and I met this morning. Officer Malone? She's a policeman? <laughs> Miss Malone is what they call a meter maid. Uh, she gives out parking tickets. I'm sorry about that ticket, Mr. Douglas. Oh, uh, don't worry about it, Vicky. I, uh, I know it was nothing personal. Well, I'm particularly sorry about that second citation. I mean, anybody can let their driver's license lapse. It's no crime. Yeah. And worse, it's negligence. <laughs> Charlie. Yeah? Uh, how's dinner coming? Oh, we'll be ready by the time you wash up. Oh, hello, Liza. Uh, no, Uncle Charlie, this is Vicky. Uh, hi. The way they run in and out of here, they all ought to have one name. <laughs> oh, I almost forgot, Steve. The Odo Club called, said they couldn't take care of that ticket you got this morning until you passed the driver's test. <laughs> oh, Dad, don't worry about that driver's test. A child of 12 could pass. Then I must be 11. <laughs> Will you excuse me? I'm <laughs> Uncle Charlie, did Dad feel any better? He was trying not to let Vicky see it, but you could tell he felt rotten. Sure he did. Getting a ticket and flunking an exam on the same day was bad enough. But having Vicky sit right across from him all evening. Oh, boy. She felt rotten, too. That's all she could talk about when I took her home. I think he's better. He's in his room studying the traffic manual. Chip and Ernie are upstairs doing their homework, and Steve is upstairs doing his. <laughs> He's one of us again. Come on, Dad. Sorry. Well, the question's tough. Well, not when you've got the answers in front of you. Bobby, loan me his uh, manual. Uh, here, come on, Chip. Uh, give me a couple. Hmm? Okay. When driving through fog at night, is it best to use your A, high beam headlights, B, parking lights, C, low beam headlights? Low beam headlights. Correct. That's crazy. People should stay home when it's foggy. <laughs> what is the arm signal for making a left turn? Uh, left arm straight up. Oh, right. And a right? Uh, arm straight up. Or you can use your flasher lights. When coming to a stop? Uh, arm straight down. Correct. I was driving behind a woman to put her arm out the window like this. Doesn't mention that signal here. She was waving to a friend. <laughs> okay, Aaron. Any question? Here's one now. What does the green light represent? <laughs> Why, which are all that easy. Uh, go. Yellow. Uh, caution. Red. Stop. Yellow and red. Y Yellow and red? Now, don't tell me. I'll get it. Uh, no, you won't. I made it up. It's so tricky. <sighs> oh, come on. <laughs> well, that ought to do it. Thanks, fellas. You sure you don't need any more coaching? I know the questions backwards. I could give you the correct answers in my sleep. And uh, sleep is what you fellas better be getting to. Good night. Okay. Good night, Dad. Dad. Yellow and red. Oh, you. <laughs> Take this to window four. The clerk will give you your license. I think I did a little better this morning. I really bone up with that manual. I practically know it backwards. <laughs> well, good. I noticed it took a little more time to study the questions. Well, I was a little overconfident yesterday. Oh, excuse me. I left my pipe open. Sure. Now, 
As I recall, uh, yesterday you had six wrong. Yes, can you imagine that? Six wrong. Today, you have seven. <laughs> seven? <laughs> but that's impossible. You must have made a mistake. I'll check it again. <clears throat> You're right. Well, I knew I couldn't have had seven wrong. Eight. <laughs> Eight wrong? I just don't believe this. I, I mean, I'm supposed to have a few brains. Same time tomorrow? <laughs> yes, I guess so. <laughs> Beautiful day. It uh, was. Was? I just took my uh, test again. And your flunky. With a capital S. You know what I need? One of those books to improve your memory. I think I'll pick one up on the way to the office. Oh, Mr. Douglas, um, I think you'd better walk to the office today. Walk to the office? Why? Well, if you flunk your driver's test, then you don't have a license and you can't, can't drive, drive without a license. license. <laughs> well, I guess maybe I'll have to call a cab and uh, ride around the cab today. But that wouldn't be such a good idea, either, because I'd have to leave the car here, and then I'd get a, another parking ticket. <laughs> now I know what Robbie means about wheels. <laughs> well, I guess I'd better call Uncle Charlie. He can come down and drive me around all day. Just a use the phone in there. <laughs> Bye. This isn't going to be a habit. Driving you around all day has upset my whole schedule. Don't complain about what you're going to get for dinner. I won't. That's good, because I'm serving leftovers from yesterday that were left over from the day before. Charlie, I just don't understand how I could have failed again. Hmm. Well, if it was a kid, I'd say he was stupid. <laughs> Twice I flunked the test, Charlie. Twice. May I make a suggestion? What? Buy yourself a horse. <laughs> Dad? Hmm? Can you drive me off to the wine man? You can drop me off at Ray Evans' house? Well, you'd better ask uh, Robbie or Uncle Charlie, hmm? Oh, you busy? No, I'm not busy. You flunked the test. Yes, yes, I did. Uh, how was school today? You flunked the test. Bernie, we've covered that. Now, uh, let's change the subject, hmm? Are well, you going to take the test again tomorrow, Dad? Well, the way things are going, I may wait till next year and take it when you take yours. Hey, that'll be good. Then you can both study to the end. Yeah, that'll be great. <laughs> Chow will be ready in ten minutes. Well, I'll have to eat later, Charlie. I've got some work to do. Come on, Ernie. Finish your dinner. I'm worried about Dad. He's got some important work to get out. At dinner time, what's more important than dinner? <laughs> you know why Dad didn't come down to eat? He's a failure. And he couldn't face us. He'll eat later. And stop making the federal case out of a traffic ticket. It's not the traffic ticket. It's the flunking. Imagine a dad flunking. Twice. <laughs> Eddie Rivas flunked chemistry twice. How come? He was stupid. <laughs> dad isn't exactly stupid. He's a very smart man. Ask anybody. Well, then how come he flunked? Twice. Stop saying that. It was conditions beyond his control. Like uh, when the TV picture goes kerflooey. Yeah. There's got to be a scientific answer, even for that. Look, you guys, it's times like this a guy needs his family. When you kids are in trouble, your dad don't go around asking a lot of foolish questions. He's right on hand to help. This time he's in trouble. All right. All right. With Robbie eating out, that makes me the oldest son. It's up to me to have a man-to-man -man talk with Dad. Right. Come on, Pete. Uh, come in. Still working, eh, Dad? Yeah, I'm still at it, Chip. Why don't you knock off for a while and come downstairs? Uncle Charlie's keeping your dinner one. Well, I uh, can't right now, Chip. Uh, it's kind of important. I'd like to finish it. Dad, I'm your son. You can level with me. Work isn't the reason you're not hungry. I know exactly what you're going through. Oh, you do? 
Sure. Every man has his ups and downs. Times when he says to himself, I'm a failure. Well, no matter what anybody says, in my book, failure or no failure, you're okay. Joe, well, I appreciate that. Sure you're feeling, though. But that's only natural. Great men have always had a bounce back from failure. You take Robert Fulton. Uh, what about Robert Fulton? His first steamboat blew up. It did? I didn't know that. And neither did I. And that's why I flunked history. But I bounced back. Got a C+. Plus. That's right, you did. Everybody misses out once in a while. Paul in, Washington, Einstein. And Mickey Mantle only hit 260 one year. Absolutely right, Chip. Feel better? Yes, yes, I feel a lot better. Then why don't you come on down and eat? Well, uh, maybe later, Chip, but I'd kind of like to finish this set. Okay. How'd you make out? I didn't get through to him. Olivia, is he coming down to eat? I doubt it. He's brooding about being a failure. He's afraid it hurts his image. I'll try and reach him. Uh, come in. Mm -hmm. well, I don't care how you feel. You gotta have something in your stomach. Oh, well, thanks, Ernie. That's very thoughtful of you. It's the least I can do. we relatives, aren't we? <laughs> All right, so you missed the driving test. It's not the end of the world. I guess that's one way of looking at it. It's the only way. And I don't care what they think at the motor vehicle department. In my book, you're not stupid. Well, thanks, Ryan. You're my father, and you're the smartest man in the world. Well, Ernie, I'm afraid there are smarter men in the world. Well, not many. And I'm not just saying that to make you feel good. You're not, huh? Well, maybe just a little. <laughs> Now, come on, eat. Well, uh, I'll eat in a minute, Annie. Eh? Well, look at it this way. If you were stupid, you would have never graduated from high school. Well, I guess that's right. I've gone to college. Well, maybe you're right. I've become an aeronautical engineer. Well, I guess you've got a point there, Ernie. Now do you feel more like eating? Yeah. <laughs> And remember, Dad, within the limits of this house, you're still a brain. <laughs> Even if they never let you drive a car again. Is that in his room? Yeah. I've got to talk to him. He's all right. I've taken care of everything. Oh, Dad, I hope you didn't take that driver's test today. As a matter of fact, I did. And I flunked it again. Oh. I mean, if you come in here to try to make me feel better about it, Chip and Ernie beat you to it. No, I came in to tell you why you flunked. Why I flunked it? Yeah. I gave you last year's manual. They've changed a bunch of those laws. Oh, no. <laughs> of course, Rob, that really is no excuse, is it? I mean, I should know what the new laws are. I probably missed a couple of the old ones, too. Well, Dad, I'll drive over tomorrow and I'll get you a new manual. Oh, thanks. Oh, Rob. Uh, don't uh, say anything to Chip and Ernie about this, huh? Well, Dad, I, I think I should. So they'll know you're not stupid. <laughs> Well, we had something more important. They realized their father could fail, and uh, they still like me. Robbie, I want my sons to feel free to give me fatherly advice at any time. 